The beauty of America is that it was built upon frontiers as diverse as the people who were a part of them. In order to enter a frontier, there must be pioneers, people who are unsatisfied with current boundaries, be it physical, social, technological, or ideological. Some pioneers choose their paths, while others have their paths thrust upon them, as was the case with Mary G. Harris. Mary G. Harris, the woman most people remember as Mother Jones, was born in 1837 to poor Irish parents that lived off the generosity of the local government in Cork. When she was nine years old, she left Ireland during the Great Potato Famine and sailed to Canada. In Canada, the family supported itself well enough to send Harris to a Catholic school for girls. Harris decided upon graduation from high school to go to Michigan and become a school teacher. Harris soon tired of teaching and before the Civil War took a steamer south to Memphis where she met and married a local iron worker and union man, George Jones. She and George had four children and lived in a small two-room house in a poor part of Memphis. In 1867, after the birth of their fourth child, George lost his job at the iron foundry. With the iron workers union locked out of the foundry, Mary tried to help her husband by taking up side jobs sewing to make ends meet. To make matters worse, a yellow fever epidemic raced through the city. One by one, the Jones children began to get the fever and aches, and one by one, they passed away, followed soon after by their father. She left Memphis and traveled to Chicago. In 1871, tragedy struck again, when the Great Chicago Fire of that year gutted her business. She watched as her working class neighborhood struggled to feed their families, while the rich seemed to get richer. A fire began to stir within her. She joined the Knights of Labor in 1880 and began her life as Mother Jones, labor pioneer. An American Railway Union member was accused and convicted to hang for his involvement in the Great Railroad Strike. Jones traveled across the country to find any support she could for the young man, even convincing President Grover Cleveland to hear what she had to say. She told the president that the worker was like her son, and she had a duty to save his life. Labor unions across the country began referring to her as Mother Jones. After Chicago, she traveled to California, where she marched with railway workers from California to Kansas, protesting better working conditions. In Kansas, she was called to help coal miners in Alabama, where she later said that she was in awe of the solidarity between white and black coal miners there, which inspired her to do all that she could for them. Following her work in Alabama, she traveled to the coal fields of Pennsylvania, where United Mine Workers were on strike. She captivated workers with her fiery speeches against big corporations and bad government. She formed food drives to get donations of food for striking miners and their families, staged parades with workers' children, and mobilized wives and daughters to harass strike breakers. Mother Jones' popularity is reflected by the miners who wanted her presence at the mines during union activities, something that was usually considered bad luck in miners' lore. The president of the UMWA was so impressed with Mother Jones, he hired her to be a speaker for the union something unprecedented at the time. By 1900, she broke another barrier when she was promoted to international organizer with a salary of $500 a year. Mother Jones became determined to help the coal miners of West Virginia organize a union in the coal fields in the southern part of the state. She knew the job would be dangerous, maybe even deadly, but she told the miners in a speech that, I shall consider it an honor if when you write my epitaph upon my tombstone, you say, died fighting their battles in West Virginia. Mother Jones was a personality like never seen by a woman in the male-dominated union organization. Perhaps it was in her personality that made her a good fit for the rough atmosphere of union organizing. Mother Jones was not worried about stereotypes or images. 
she wanted to help her boys, as she called them. When a fight broke out at Kelly's Creek Coal Mining Company, Mother Jones rushed in and gathered the miners together and gave them a stirring speech that excited the men for action. Her actions during the strike earned her the title of Most Dangerous Woman in America by newspapers and opposition. She was never afraid to be in the middle with the strikers. She was often found sitting with the miners during their lunch breaks, talking about the union while they shared beans and hog gel with her. Mother Jones was a pioneer because she wasn't afraid to be who she wanted to be and say what needed to be said, a position not afforded many women during her lifetime. Coal miner Adley Tompkins said she behaved like a woman who had replaced her past with zeal for what she was doing, as if she had already died and had nothing left to fear. Mother Jones' invasion, as she called it, of Kelly's Creek represented what became her style of grassroots activism to get support for whatever cause she was battling for. After Kelly's Creek, she organized miners in nearby Paint Creek and Cabin Creek, then turned her attention toward other labor unrest in Pennsylvania. Her immense support in West Virginia paid off when she convinced neighboring West Virginia coal miners and Ohio coal miners to go on strike to support the Pennsylvania miners on strike in the anthracite coal fields. Miners were not the only laborers Mother Jones helped. In 1903, she led a march of mill children from Philadelphia to the president's home in New York City. For Mother Jones, in order to achieve success in labor, the labor force must be united and must actively participate in the movement, even if they were children. What made Mother Jones so successful among the miners was that she wasn't afraid to challenge not only big business, but also the union leadership themselves. She used her mobility and notoriety to champion their causes and they appreciated her by calling her mother and seeing her as a saint. In 1904, Mother Jones joined the Socialist Party and began organizing both labor and political protests. In 1920, she was involved in organizing the largest insurrection since the Civil War, when thousands of miners marched on Blair Mountain to free imprisoned miners. She was arrested in 1912 and imprisoned. She was convicted of conspiring to commit murder and sentenced to 20 years in jail. Public outcry of her imprisonment led to a Senate committee to investigate the conditions in the coal fields. And in 1913, at the age of 83, she was freed by West Virginia Governor Hatfield. Not one to sit idle, she traveled to Colorado to participate in a coal strike being held there. Mother Jones went on to participate in strikes in 1915 and 1916 to promote unions in the garment industry and streetcar workers. She rallied strikers at a steel mill in Pittsburgh in 1919, and in 1921, at the age of 91, she was a guest of the Mexican government to attend the Pan-American Federation of Labor Meeting, where she was recognized as the people's leader of the labor movement. In 1923, at the age of 93, Mother Jones left the United Mine Workers Union and moved to Alliance, Ohio. She made countless speeches at Labor Day parades when her health would allow it, and made a fiery speech in the name of labor on her 100th birthday celebration in Silver Spring, Maryland. And I long to see the day when labor will have the destination of the nation in her own hands. And that she will stand the united force and show the world what the workers can do. Mother Jones was a pioneer among the modern labor movement frontier of her time. Her influence was instrumental in many of the labor successes of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. One fellow labor organizer called her the greatest woman agitator of our times. She was denounced in the U.S. Senate as the grandmother of all agitators. Mother Jones was proud of that title and said she hoped to live to be the great grandmother of agitators. Mother Jones passed away seven months after her 100th birthday and was buried in the Union Minor Cemetery at Mount Olive, Illinois, where she could sleep eternally with her boys. For the death of Mother Jones, gloom and sorrow hover around the miner's home. This 
grand. 